Okay, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for coming to this webinar. And I would also like to thank the IDS for having my co-author and myself today for this presentation. Um, of course, for us to share with you the process evaluation of the RPRH law, RPRH Communication and Education. I would also like to thank our fellow presenters for providing us as part of their presentation with substantial introduction of the RPRH law, its timeline, its history, as well as the circumstances surrounding the conduct of our studies. So for our part of the studies, or for our, uh, for, for our study, the objective, uh, given the mandate, let me just minimize this, okay, there you go. This paper focuses on the implementation of the reproductive health education mandate of the RPRH, specifically on the output level performance of the implementing agencies and personnel and the en enabling factors and barriers that affect the implementation of the program. So the implementa uh, implementing agencies for RPRH communication and education are as follows. So under communication, we have DOH, PIA, and DLGUs. So DOH, the PIA, and the LGUs um, have the collaborative responsibility of initiating and sustaining a heightened multimedia campaign. And DOH also has the responsibility to develop a health promotion and communication plan, as well as guidelines for monitoring and evaluation and review and release of guidelines on awarding and recognition. So for education, on the other hand, we have DepEd, SHED, TESDA, and under DepEd, we have the schools. DepEd, SHED, and the TESDA are responsible for the integration of the RPRH information into formal, non-formal, and indigenous learning. Then DepEd, um, curriculum development, training for educators, inclusion of RPRH education in teacher, child, parents, activities, and sustainability. So the schools under uh, DepEd are responsible for the provision of supportive environment. Now, what did we do? Um, we did document review, key informant interviews, focus group discussions. We used semi-structured interview guides and utilized content and thematic analysis. analysis. So for our findings, um, the review of relevant documents, interviews, and FGDs show that the key agencies in the implementation of the RPRH education and communication manifest compliance with some of the provisions of the RPRH laws IRR. As to the implementation of its mandate to assist the DOH in implementing RPRH public awareness, information dissemination, and communication, the PIA showed that while it has no policies or programs specific to the RPRH, it has been responding to the RPRH-related communication needs of the LGUs and concerned agencies upon the latter's initiative by providing technical and non-technical assistance as well as non-monetary funding provisions. Moreover, it has been complying with some of its elements through its implementation of the Gender and Development Program. Now, in terms of RPRH education, the DepEd's major accomplishment is the development and issuance of the policies and guidelines on the implementation of the CSE in 2018. In terms of implementation of the actual curriculum required by the IRR, nonetheless, at the time of the interviews three years later, there is an apparent delay in the implementation of the RPRH education provisions, considering the timeline of events presented, and there seems to have a serious need for a more detailed presentation of what needs to be done at the level of instruction, considering the information that the set guidelines have not reached the teachers, and that is uh, that there is an apparent lack of qualified manpower, facilities, trainings, instructional materials, coordination, and monitoring system. Now, um, our policy recommendations um, for RPRH, RPRH communication, specifically on the lack of policies programs specific to RPRH at the DOH HPCS, based on the interview, while there is a national policy on health promotion, there are no existing policies or programs specific to the provisions of the IRR, such as initiation and sustenance of a heightened nationwide multimedia campaign, development of a health promotion and communication plan, continuation of the implementation of existing approved health promotion and communication strategies, 
technical and other necessary assistance to the LGU's review of the health promotion and communication within 60 days from the implement implementation of the IRR. And in order to better implement such provisions, it is recommended that a focal point person for the RPRH program be assigned at the DOHHPCS. On the lack of policies and programs specific to RPRH public awareness and communication at the PIA. As expressed during the interview, the PIA provides technical assistance to LGUs relevant to RPRH as it does for any other government program. However, the agency has no set objectives specific for RPRH. As such, and as suggested by the PIA representative, it is recommended that targets specific to RPRH be set at the PIA for better implementation of the RPRH law. Now, our policy recommendations for RPRH education, specifically on the need for a written curriculum for CSE integration across all subject areas. In DO31, it is specified that only in certain subject areas is RPRH information mandatorily integrated, which runs counter to the provision of the IRR that such information must be integrated in all subject areas. To address this, among other needs relevant to the development of the curriculum required by the IRR, it is recommended that supplemental guidelines on the implementation of RPRH education or CSE with details on ex extent of integration across all subject areas be issued. On the need for teacher guides on age and development appropriate RPRH topics. So according to the interviews, RPRH topics can be easily identified as age and development appropriate if they are already incorporated in curriculum guides provided to the teachers. This will also ensure that such topics have been carefully chosen and arranged based on the needs of the learners and their developmental stages. It is recommended then that curriculum guides and other instructional materials for age and development appropriate CSE be issued. On the lack of teacher trainings, while RPRH education trainings are said to be well, then currently being conducted, the interviews revealed that the, the, the need for more inclusive and accessible trainings for teachers in order for them to better equip themselves for effective instruction. As such provision of inclusive and accessible teacher training specific to CSE is highly recommended. On the need to strengthen uh, psychosocial services specific to RPRH. During the interviews, it was expressed that teachers are assigned to deliver some of the tasks expected of licensed guidance counselors and school nurses due to lack of personnel in their respective schools. As such, ensuring the hiring of licensed guidance counselors and school nurses is recommended to more properly address the RPRH-related psychosocial needs of the students. Equally important, of course, is the provision of physical facilities of, uh, for such services, considering the lack of such. It is also recommended that dissemination mechanisms for RPRH information available in school facilities be developed. And on the need to strengthen overall implementation of the RPRH law in education. While most of the provisions of the law have been complied with given the continuous efforts of the implementing agencies, there is still a need for strengthened programs to realize the goals of the RPRH law, especially in education. In order to enhance the motivating and enabling factors in the implementation of the CSE, creation of awards and recognition guidelines for compliance schools, allotment of RPRH specific budget, and creation of RPRH implementation committee in schools are recommended. So that's all for our study. Thank you very much for listening and uh, good day.